Yeah, it does. Huh? It goes quite nice. I'm sure the four soul and a metal prop and stuff will do pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it's jumping quite a bit. I think with a four, you get close to fit, flipping this thing with the wrong wind. Nice, eh? Yeah. Yeah. You can turn it, you see how it Yeah. See how it turns down. That's yeah. What, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it turns nicely. It doesn't, it, it sticks in the turn, yeah. like it sticks yeah, to the water bed. The water bed, Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get into. It like sticks into the turn, yeah, that's quite nice. But you see it's trimming down and rolling the boat onto the sponsor. Yeah. That's what the leg looks like. And you see the front part of the sponsor hitting the water there. See the yeah. nose is up? Now watch when I turn, it turns down. Can you see that? Yeah. That's what I want to demonstrate. Okay. I put this on zoom in on. See that there? Yeah. That's exactly what I want people to see. Yeah, there she, she hit the LVC there. So there you go guys, that little run was on a three cell. You can see the shitty little plastic prop we're running there. I just wanted to run the plastic prop for starters. Very impressed with the handling. You could see in that video the uh, Enigma leg uh, demonstrating how it puts the nose down and rolls the boat onto the camber. And I think this is going to be the start of some exciting FE F1 racing lacquer. Right guys, so we're uh, back in the workshop, which is... Uh, which is all of 10 yards away from the water's edge and i have to say um i was definitely very impressed with the first run out considering i was running this old and when i say old this little three cell must be at least two years old now i've run it many many times in my bro rc surface i had the uh, lbc set on its highest so we uh, finished up at 3.8 volts per cell which is still good um yeah we didn't put too much uh Stress on the LiPo, ran quite easily. Yeah, as I shared, I've been running uh, this little plastic prop. I just thought I'd put it on for starters, just to check the temps of the ESC and uh, the LiPos and the wires, etc. That was all cool. Um, I do intend run, running some of my old Nitro um, props. This is a little Prather 220 that I shaped uh, years ago, which I think will run very nicely. And uh, I'm also just going to run, the next run is going to be with a uh, four cell that I'm also running my surface and we'll see how that goes but I think that's going to light the water up a little bit better. But yeah, just to, uh, you know, for those of you that haven't been on the journey with me so far, just to give you some backstory on, on the Enigma leg as I call it, Enigma. Um, it stems from the original Enigma leg I designed this, I designed this well over 15 years ago, I built it uh, when I raced the uh, F1 gas outboards and this was an evolution of legs that I came up with myself after initially running the lawless leg uh, which was a uh, which was a great leg beautifully machined etc etc but just wasn't handling the um, it wasn't handling the uh, the gas outboard as I wanted it to and definitely wasn't performing as I wanted it to. And there were a couple of features that I want to incorporate into a leg, uh, which I've done with this and which I'll just briefly share with you now. So the reason, 
The reason I call it the Enigma leg, it's quite an enigma because it doesn't just turn, this leg doesn't just turn left and right when it turns. When it turns, it actually has, um, through the geometry of the way I've set this leg up and designed it around its pivot. This leg, when it turns, actually it, it cambers, so the leg actually tilts over and it also lowers the prop line, the thrust line, okay? So you'll see, which you would have seen in the video when the boat's running and it's trimmed up slightly, the moment you uh, execute a turn, the nose drops and it rolls onto the inside. If you observe this leg from behind, you can see yeah, it's basically perpendicular to the, uh, the running surface of the sponsons. And you'll see when I execute a turn, you have to look at this angle. If you look at this angle here of your skeg, in relation to your sponsons there, we have a seven degree camber. Both sides, obviously, equally so. Uh, maybe if you like, I can try and set up a little gauge here. Okay, around point one there, you can see that. If I trim the leg over and put the gauge on the skate, you can see there's 7.5. I like to just say it's about seven degrees of camber. It's obviously, depending on the extension of your turn, but the way I've got to turn here, anyway, it's, it's that. That geometry that basically almost like um, you're leaning a motorbike into a turn. This is leaning the boat into the turn. And the negative trim, which is zero this way, zero. If I put that on here, you see we got one degree of negative trim when we turn. Okay? See to the center line of the proper at about 94 and if I turn it to the left and then we measure it again you can see that we are 90 millimeters so we're literally lowering our thrust line lowers by up to four millimeters okay in a full turn and so obviously when you're going to turn when you're lowering your thrust line in other words you're moving your thrust line down okay, it's also that's that's what pitches the the sponsor down so yeah, that's just a brief uh, overview of the Enigma leg, and I just think uh, as I as I test it more and more, you guys are going to see the amazing performance of it uh, come to play. And this is this this is purely built for circuit racing. You know, when you when you're running a boat for straight line speeds, uh, you don't really need anything on the back other than your propeller and a, and a skeg to keep you in a straight line. But if you're going to be racing a circuit, uh, which is where all the fun is with the tunnel hull, and you'll be flying the hull down the straights and trying to get around the buoys as quickly and as fast and as sharp as possible, uh, this is where the Enigma leg is going to come into play. And uh, it turns just as well both left and right. I've uh, put together a 5mm flex shaft here, and that's running in a steel-lined... Uh, flexible outer, outer stuffing tube, which uh, I know for many uh, who still believe in the Teflon liners in brass tubes, who think that's the ultimate uh, solution to a flex shaft. I think those in the know who uh, work with flex shaft every day will tell you the best liner you can have, the best uh, stuffing tube you can have for a flex shaft is a steel liner and greased, not oiled. All you have to do is turn the wheel on your radio and your Enigma leg does it for you. You can stay on the power and drive it through. Lacquer.